Hey guys, what's up? Overlord Tico here. How you guys doing today? What's up? <sighs> Bringing you guys some Yuki Dula Salute Roses. Alright, so this is a request I actually had uh, from a, a few weeks back. I, I don't know, maybe it was before I went to Cuba on my vacation. Anyways, I'm finally getting around to it because you know, I've been a little bit busy and trying to get a few new games and such. So here's a deck, and it is a tune deck. So Overlord Tico is going to show you a tune deck. Now, this might not be the conventional tune deck you're thinking about because I try to I try to please my fans, the people that are giving me some requests that I, I can do. If I can do a request, I'll tell you. But I also try to keep it workable. You know, I will make a tune deck just for fan just for fan based things. If it's not a tune deck that would actually work well in the game, you know, and actually be able to beat an opponent properly, you know, and consistently win against and against any decks in the game. So here it is. Anyway, so we got the summon two summon skull as my deck leader. I got two curse breakers. Two fiend reflection number twos, three gate decks for the high star levels, three Ganyan, that's for a stall. When it flips up, it spell binds the opposing monster for one turn. Three magical neutralizing force field will cancels out all power up boost or decreasing and uh, destroys all face all all continuous traps on the field. Three magician of faith to get back our spells or traps. Three mega morphs to power up any monster by uh, by 300 points, I believe. Three Mimic Cats, which shall copies any card that's already been destroyed from either mana by opponent and brings it back to the field. Three Paralyzing Potion, par eternally spellbinds any creature that's an, that's not machine. Three para Dragons, three Roll Decrees, and that's it. And no, I guess that's not it. <laughs> what am I thinking about? Three Roll Decrees cancels out all the traps. Three Stuffed Animals, three Toon Summon Skulls, three Toon Worlds. Alright, so that's the deck right there. As you guys can see, all these monsters that I got right here, all the monsters, with the exception of Gate Dig and Magician of Faith, those monsters, and Fear and Reflection number two as well. Those monsters, I guess it's pretty much like half of them, half of them uh, are powered up by the Tomb Field. Like I said, I try to stick with something that's more workable, something that's consistent, that can actually win. You wouldn't want to have, for example, let's go over here. Let's go over here and look at another type, another, another creature that some people might actually want me to use for example all right so we'll look at the let's see where are you all right let's see there we go manga you ran all right so it is good but look at the it's got 2200 attack and it's a seven star the two summon skull has got six stars and it's 2500 attack if you think about it it's not that good and then we also got bikuri box so bikuri box should be Right here, the Curie box. This is also another tune. It's also a seven star, and it's twenty three hundred attack. Now this might be workable. This you might want to put in your deck, but it's not really the best possibility. You know, it's better to stick with two thousand attack with five stars or twenty five hundred attack six stars. You know, for workability. That way, for speed, your speed is always an important thing. You know, and Overlord Tico likes his speed. So without speed, a deck really can't do anything. So. Let's go ahead and face Seto Kaiba real quick. <laughs> Look, my deck cost is like three points less than his. So that's a funny part. All right, so let's kick some ass here. Hopefully I get some good stuff starting with. I guess the gate dig for now will do. So we can get all our stars. Now the bad thing about this deck is it really can't work unless it gets a tomb field, you know? If it doesn't get a tomb world early on, it's like at a disadvantage. Alright, so let's see what this guy's got. Alrighty. Let's get rid of this real quick. I don't think we'll need a royal decree for now, so uh, let's take this out. I bet you anything that's probably like a lesser dragon or something. Not a lesser dragon, Kaiser dragon probably. Let's see. Oh, it's a Legin. Legini. Because with the, the special ability, the deck leader ability that Seto has, but pretty much what it does is it lowers the star, the summoning points, the stars of the any dragon monsters. So a lesser uh, Kaiser dragon, I believe, has six stars. So it would have four stars. In the beginning of the game, you start with four stars, so he would be able to summon it automatically. 
Alright guys, here we got a two world, so it's time to kick some booty. Hey. Alright, give me my power up. Alright, so let's do this. Let's move this here. Let's move this here. So if we were to summon a blue eyes white dragon right there, then pretty much a blue eyes white dragon would become 2500 attack. Alright, hopefully that's not something too strong. Alright, let me put this here. Alright, let's power this up. So even if it's a blue eyes white dragon, so it's a B2500, this is 2800. Let's go ahead and display the battle. Oh, it's an hourglass, of course. Oh wow, this guy's like doom. Cause that, that's that's the that's the good thing about the tune, you know. Tune in this game pretty much gives you a 500 point boost, but lowers every other monster that's not a tune. So it pretty much makes a 1,000 point gap. That's pretty good. So if two monsters got the same attack, for example, if two monsters got 2,000 attack, one of them is gonna become 1,500, the other one's gonna become 2,500. So that's a pretty good advantage right there. That's you need you need at least like two equip spells to ma to pretty much make it the same for the other monster. So yeah. <laughs> Laughter. I guess he loses some life points now. Oh, I guess not. Alright, I don't know what to do about this guy. Let me just leave him there right now. I think Seto's is trying to commit suicide. He just keeps bringing his stuff out for some reason. Alright. I have got to do something now. Let's see. I've got another Toon World. Uh, Alright, I will take this out. And there's another hour Hourglass of Life. Now this one is going to make him lose a thousand points. We, can, we don't have to watch the battle. We already seen this guy's attack. This one's gonna make him lose a thousand points and revive any monster that he has. The other one was our glass of Korish, which pretty much powers up uh, his monsters by one thousand points when he gets destroyed by making by paying a thousand life, a thousand of your life points. So since he didn't have any monsters, they did not activate. So that's that's where that little effect would come in. I thought he, I thought he had any some, but he didn't. So it don't matter. I haven't even played any cards this game. Uh, let's go ahead and activate a Toon World over here. The reason I'm doing this is because I'm trying to close the gap on all those places. As you can see now, my tools can go from this side. So next turn, I'm going to use my Magician of Faith and flip it back out. See if I can get another Toon World on this area. I don't want to take my Summer Skull out because my Summer Skull, if I put it into the metal, metal field, he's going to become 2500. Alright, let's see what we got here. Let's move this all the way over here. This magician of faith can flip up and get back my tomb world. I'll leave this right here for now still. Like I've mentioned already. <laughs> I doubt there's anything he really wants to do. I think it's about time to place that royal decree somewhere as well. Maybe he got a mirror force or something. So how about I place this Royal Decree in this very corner over here. I can move over this. Move my Toon World up. And now that can end my turn. No. Yeah, let's attack this real quick. It's a battle ox. So, I don't know. We're not going to watch it. <laughs> We're not going to watch it. We already seen this guy's attack. Yeah, this guy is like, he's pretty much done. I guess Spellbound because wind beats dark, beats uh, earth. No. Alright, let's see what he's got for me. What do you got for Tico? What do you got for Overgrow Tico? Come on, Kaiba. Bring it on. 
Bring it on. I don't care. I have green hair. I have money and green hair. That makes me overly powerful. Alright, let's see what we got here. Alright, let's power this up a little bit more. We don't care about this bad boy over here. Alright, so if I were to activate... We turn these three spots into two. So this guy has a... He's monstrous in defense, so let's attack it. He gets no stars, because so he's been stalling for a while. Alright, so let's watch the summon skulls attack in the middle field. Oh my god. Summon skull. Toon summon skull. You know what I don't like in this game? They changed the art. For example, like, the Toon world doesn't look like the original Toon world. So that's kind of weird. I don't know why that is. But yeah, I don't like it. Like, the, the, the Fiend Castle card in this game is what Toon world looks like in real life. So I don't know what that's all about. It's kind of weird in my opinion. Show me the money! Alright, let's activate my tool world. It'd be cool if there was a monster that had the effect to uh, make your spells be able to move to spaces. That'd be pretty awesome, I think. Alright, so next turn, my pair of dragon and my summon squad are gonna be able to move forward. I think since we don't want to see any more attacks or anything, let's just attack that. Nothing. And let's see here. Hmm. I would like to be able to. Let's see. Let's get another two world. See, the thing I'm trying to do here, as you guys can tell, is that I'm not sure exactly what he has. Maybe he has a blue eyes white dragon. But I don't want to risk it, you know? But I don't believe any of those two monsters in defense can actually stop me. Not this one, and just, but maybe, for example, if it's a light monster, and this monster attacks it, it's gonna be good. But if it's like a, what do you call it? A earth monster, not an earth monster. Earth, fire. I forgot which element darkness beats. I can't remember right now. Let me just go ahead and get my turn. Alright, let's see what I got here. Let's go ahead and get my turn again. Wonder if you guys can see exactly what I'm doing. See, I want to turn that one spot into two, just in case anything happen anything goes wrong. Like I said to you guys, if, I, if my monsters happen to be paralyzed whenever I attack over here, for example, they're paralyzed in one of these terrains. This would be 2,800 attack. And this would be 2300 attack, and then the blue eyes would be able to kill them. And I don't want to lose my, the advantage I've already created, so that's pretty much what I'm pretty what I'm doing there. So if it seems like I'm stalling, I probably am. <laughs> All right, we got a genie. All right, so we got two more spaces right here. And turn two more spaces into two. And now we only got one space, it's not a two space. So this should be able to take care of it. But I don't really need to do that. Because this turn he's gonna move to the side probably. Yep. Alright, so. I guess I'm gonna just go ahead and attack for the win. <laughs> Overlord Tico Trance over Seto Kaiba. Alright guys, and the point I was running the magic neutralizing force fields is because as you guys can see I don't really have any power-ups, just those mega morphs for the small power-ups. So I mean if I can neutralize my opponent from getting any power-ups, then that's important. To be honest, you know, my monsters are always going to have a stronger attack as long as they're in the tomb field. It's going to make a 1,000 point gap. With them losing 500 or me gaining 500. So the neutralizing force fields are just there to pretty much negate that. 
pretty much uh, negate the power-ups and keep the field even in my favor, of course. All right, guys, so thank you guys for watching. Overlord Tico is out. Peace.